Hello everybody, Zelfie here, and I am here to do another deck profile, but this one's going to be sort of interesting because this is four cards that we don't have yet, right? Although still, I think you can apply some of this stuff to our current metagame as well. And I'm looking at Single Strike Rura B, which sounds really strange because like, what? How does this, has loss of card interact with them? You know, Single Strike. And this is where the Brilliance came out in the Yokohama uh, Regional Championship. Uh, so first off, they're a few sets ahead of us. They have a have a few cards that we don't, uh, like a set of like V Stars and V Max, like the Oxys Air Aura, ZC and Zavazita, and Rota V Star. Uh, they also have Incandescent Arcana already released out there. So you know they're like half a set ahead of us in terms of cards, right? Uh, but regardless, you know, there's still a lot of cards here that you'll recognize, and then also probably some that in standard that you won't recognize. So let's just go ahead and get started with the first card here is the Rota V. You're probably familiar with this card, the Faith Bane. Um, you got its charge, which is a decent ability, especially if you're going first, and then you got Scrap Shore, which is just decent damage output in general. Uh, we also have this Rota V stored here. Uh, which is a new card. It's got Scrappy Pulse, which is the same thing, except you just start with 80 damage instead of 40 damage, so, you know, a little extra boost on that power there. Uh, we got more HP as well, without sacrificing the fact that we are a uh, V, and I need to check back at the right time. Here we go. So yeah, uh, you get like 70 HP from it, uh, you know, pretty decent. And then you also have the V-Star ability, which just allows you to discard any cards from your hand. So this is really good for getting the tools out of your hand. But the thing about this deck that's unique that I haven't seen other room decks using is the Single Strike Engine here. So they got the Tower of Darkness here, which is this discard a Single Strike card to draw two cards. So you can discard these Single Strike tools that we have. They're not really used in any other fashion besides that, um, to basically just draw more cards get through shit faster, which is really, really cool. And then, yeah, that's basically it. And then for the new cards, we also got uh, Serena here. Serena's pretty alright, you can discard up to three, and then draw until you have five, or it's a boss's orders on explicitly the Pokemon. So, you know, those are the two really new cards here. But really, you can look at the Single Strike Engine for Ronan and sort of explore what else you got. Uh, in case, you know, discarding tools isn't good enough, you can also discard the Electrode in a fringe case, or yeah, the Voltorb in the fringe case, this is also a single strike card. But we also see this Buzzap Generator here, which allows you to search your deck for two electric energy cards that attach to your Pokemon anyway. But, you're also probably thinking, is, isn't that a little weird? Because like, you know, you got EXP shares, your energy cost isn't that high, you know, we're not running like EXP share like Palkia, for example, right? Um, like, if you want to enter him, could you just start a motor? Well, the interesting thing is that since we aren't using any of the Porygon 2s, which is typically the side attacker paired with this, you know, we got the garbage attack here for each card of the loss of blah, 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 do damage, right? That's usually the backup attacker. But since we're not running the Porygons in this list and we're relying entirely on the Bs, um, we could blow ourselves up with Electric, get all the energy we need for the rest of the game out on the field, and then play Roxanne. Uh, Rox or Electrode is our way of getting us down to three prize cards, which allows us to Roxanne our opponent. Um, just like a thought that could be put out there, right? <laughs> so it's, it's super interesting what they're able to do with this. Uh, on top of that, we got three other V-Pokemon here. This is like you know, Liberty on the search out a supporter. This can grab out the Roxanne. We got the Crobat, which can allow you to draw some cards, particularly in the early game. And then Arctic is a really good bench sir. Uh, just allows you to use that reconstitute to basically uh, accelerate uh, cards into the loss zone, or not into the loss zone, into the discard uh, for Rurub's attack. And like I said, we got the Tower of Darkness here. The the text on these tools doesn't matter because we can't actually use any of these attacks. Even if we attach it to the Voltorb, we couldn't use any of them. But what just matters is that they're uh, single strike tools that we can discard with our stadium. And that's pretty neat, I think. At least in my opinion, right? So, uh, what else is there to talk about? XP Share allows you to move energy around. Uh, Big Charm allows your Pokemon to lift hits. 
Um, and Air Balloon's pretty good for me to run too. You may see that I have 56 cars here, and that's because the person who played this list at the Yokohama Regionals did not publicly release this list. So I manually went through the video and tried to scan the deck for every possible card that I could find there. And so I got it down to 56 cards for sure, but there are four cards that I just simply could not find. Um, so if you want to ask me what those cards were, it's definitely another Tower of Darkness. Um, there is probably another Quick Ball somewhere, right? This does make sense for four Ultra and like four Quick, right? Um, what else is there? So that's two cards. I want to say there's probably another Big Charm in there, because the Big Charms are pretty good for allowing your Pokemon to live his. Especially these guys, which just sit on the bench all game. So it's nice to get them out of KO ranges. Um, that's probably another research. It seems weird. Uh, personally, I feel like a second Roxanne would not be awful, because sometimes you'll just want to use sort of Luminate on the ground research, right? But like, you know, with the whole Electro play, maybe the second Roxanne is not that bad. But this is probably what the list will look like. Uh, you definitely don't need any more single strike tools. You have more single strike tur uh, tools than you have turns in the game. So you'll be fine on that front. Um, and yeah, so instead of being able to like play the list and show you, I'm just going to go ahead and watch through the Yokohama games and sort of explain what I see uh, when we go through them. So this is the Yokohama Regionals. I can't tell what round this is. I think this is like round three or something like that. Um, just for context that this regional was a best of one. So, you know, you're not going to see like um, a really, really like back and forth gameplay that stuff. Like people are going to reveal cards on the fly. They're going to be like, oh shit, I wish I had put it around that. Stuff like that, right? So best of one is definitely a different format. <laughs> Even the caster's like, Galarian Arcuno was this Tower of Darkness as a single strike tools. What's going on here? Right. Um, but, you know, this guy is off to a pretty decent start. He's already discarded the card with um, the uh, single strike tower. Now he's just Articuno to grab another card. Uh, just further accelerating stuff. We get two electric energies out there, which is a little weird. We don't have a whole lot of, like, uh, energy recovery. So, yeah. Probably just decided, hey, uh, it's probably fine. <laughs> and then the opponent has to read the card because, like, what the hell is this, right? Uh, but we attach a speed energy, it allows us to draw two cards, then we put two tools back. Uh, we actually don't know what the opponent is even playing yet, technically. Uh, we see a Sobble, uh, in the most relevant, uh, Sobble deck still around our other Palkia, or Arceus. More likely, it's probably Palkia. As we even see the, uh, Temple Sino in there to back our suspicions up, right? We can pull up under the Rotom. And especially when going first in this format, um, Rotom is such a huge advantage, uh, just because like, you get an extra three cards to start off your game, right? Um, I think there's some decks in this format that do want to go second, namely Lost Box, but most other decks are just trying to go first for the evolution advantage. But this deck has like a actual real advantage in being able to go first. And Polky is like one of those decks that really does not care to go second. Sure, you get a rid of Battle Pass, but is that like really good enough, right? Technically, you also get Keep Calling as well. Uh, so, you know, not the worst situation, but it's not like Palkia's like, oh, yes, second, let's go. You know, Palkia's sort of like begrudgy, like, yeah, it's okay. But like I said, Rotom is a deck that very well excels where it goes first. And so, like, in a best of one format, if you win that coin flip, like, that's so free. It's so good. We're just gonna see Greninja and uh, Palkia come out. Not really sure how great of an attacker uh, Greninja is. Like, there's just not a whole lot of Pokemon for Greninja to snipe, right? Unless if you, like, do Echoing Horde stuff on a uh, Voltorb and then attack a already damaged Rotom. But, like, by that point, like, Rotom is probably super far ahead. The Rotom Bobus reminds me a bit of, like, Polkia, where it's just gonna have really, really strong turn twos. Um, gonna be able to hit you really, really hard. Especially going first, um, they're not just going to succeed a lot. Yes, I also show off the Rotom V-Star because, like, what is this card? These cards came, like, it's so weird. I'm going to pause the video a little. Um, these cards came out already in JP, like, a month or two ago. Ah, fuck. When they release, it's... 
it's September right now, so they probably released like super early August. Um, yeah, super early August sounds about right. That, I think it was a little bit before that too. It was probably back in July. So, you know, outside of the Serena, the the V, uh, the Rotom has been around in JP for a long time, while well, in America we are just getting it. That's why I love watching Japanese footage, because like, you just get to see so many things here that are uh, unique and coming up. And I think Japan also has a real appreciation for techs and more wacky decks. I feel like uh, in America we see a lot more uh, streamlined list, uh, which is good. You know, it's, uh, there's definitely times where I disagree with JP's takes, um, and I like American takes a lot. Uh, but yeah, it's also interesting. Also, you get like these sub metas in JP because they're re their sets are released in smaller uh, parts. So, in so right now uh, they have Incandescent Arcana and Paranidum Trigger, and that's going to be a part of our Silver Tempest set, right? But they only have Incandescent Arcana, so you get to see like how these mini sets are explored, and you just like get a little bit more time with each card. Um, before like the next cool thing comes up, and then when we get it, we get like everything all at once. So it's it's pretty interesting, all things considered. There's that big charm, and I feel like big charm is the tool that he definitely attaches the most. That's why when I was looking at the list and I saw I was missing four cards, I was like, "There's probably another big charm in here." We see them a lot. <laughs> We also don't see a Voltorb in play, but like, we don't really need to. We're against Palkia, so all our prizes are pretty free, and I'm not too worried about Roxanne. Um, but we should, like, basically the only thing that we should care for is like, can we get our energies on Rotom? It's not that hard, right? Um, in fact, he probably just isn't gonna be putting down a whole lot of Pokemon in general. It's just Rotoms. He played a Crobat already, and then Articuno does the same thing for a while. Um, he only other like support Pokemon is Lumideon, so he's probably just not benching Pokemon so the Palkia can't find a KO, or it takes a lot to actually get the KO with the Palkia, right? This is pretty smart. This is what I was doing when I was playing uh, Decidueye V-Star, so I just not put enough Pokemon them. Uh, I used to believe for a while that like uh, Palkia was whatever, that people could play around it, but then Palkia just started including more ways to get damage with like Echoing Horn, Quick Shooting, Stopping Tantrum, and uh, Leon, so like, it, it was just like, okay, okay, maybe you got me Palkia, and even if I don't play it, you can still find the K on me. Uh, we're gonna see Star Portal pop here, um, and we're gonna attach question where he's putting all the energies, but still the other pocket. And then we are going to cross switcher up the uh, unenergized Rotom. And then attach an energy. Okay, so he finds his KO, but it sucks that he has to KO the one without energy in order to get out of the active. That's like the sketchy partner. We're just gonna see more Tower of Darkness uh, because he plays so many of them. He's like likely for him to have a ball game, and even if the opponent like bumps it, he's not doing super well. Oh, not to mention another important thing is that at the very beginning we saw Tempo of Sinnoh in the uh, prize cards, so you know he has two speed energy attached. Normally you can shut this down right now uh, just by forcing him to play another Tower of Darkness at least, right? Uh, but because the uh, Temple of Sinnoh is prized, that option just isn't available. Otherwise, like, it'd be kind of shaky, because if he didn't have another Tower of Darkness, he could really fall behind this matchup. Only because he chose- only because he attached speed energies over lightning energies. I don't know if that's, like, something to really consider. Um, because I don't know JP list enough to know if they always run Temple of Sinnoh. Like, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, it's like a car gets the, it's a car that gets turned in and out. But I just wanted to throw that out there that like Temple of Sinnoh is would have been a real consideration. Uh, but one, this is a best of format, so we don't even know if our opponent actually has it. And two, um, it's prized, so it doesn't actually matter anyways. Uh, the Rotom player still also hasn't used his V-Star, uh, which is also super interesting. But he's gonna KO a Palkia with a Choice Spell in already Evolved. And this is like super interesting because when I was watching his back, he just like doesn't do anything. Um, 
no V-Star, no anything, no, not even putting down like a backup attacker. I think he's pretty confident in the fact that he knows he's going to be able to live this hit regardless. So he just like, he's like, okay, whatever, I, I challenge you to do something about this, right? Um, he is in Roxanne range, which is scary, but he has a lot of ways to draw out of, um, draw out of that hit, basically. So even if he's drawing two cards, he has Road of V-Star still, he has Articuno, and he has Tower of Darkness. That's three instant ways of drawing cards, and technically he also has Lumidion as well. Um, if it's still in the deck, which it should be. Uh, Lumidion can just go ahead and grab a, uh, grab like a Professor Research or a Serena. Or even a Roxanne if, uh, something else got knocked out. Yeah, this is like the commentators pointing out that Ta uh, Temple Sido is in fact prized, so oops. That would have been nice. It would have been a great way to shut down the opponent right now. Without like necessarily, uh, what's it called? Without necessarily needing to kill the Rotom. So, we also see the Italian grab the cross switcher here, which probably means that he has another cross switcher in his hand. Which is interesting because, like, he already played like two of them, right? I feel like Cross Switcher is so weird to see all four of them played because, like, you can only play the card twice. I just always feel like, okay, well, I run, I run an extra copy of the card because I expect it to be prized. But with like Cross Switchers, like, well, if I really only expected this card to be played once per match, it's it's just a weird card to think about for me. But yeah, we're gonna see Cross Switcher take out the Arcano. So like, you know, the Rotom's gonna remain alive the entire time, which is sketchy. And, you know, we're gonna see more search here. Gotta grab out, I don't know, literally anything. You can grab single strike Voltorb in this card as well. <laughs> There's just a lot of things he can grab, or he doesn't even need to. It's also interesting that the uh, Rotom list doesn't play any v or not V-Stars, uh, Radiance. There's just not any Radiance that really help out here. Um, but we have not seen an Electric Radiant Pokemon, or even a Dragon-type Radiant Pokemon for that matter. It's so, like, technically there's still another chance to get like a Radiant support for a Rotom deck. Not sure if it'd be super helpful, but you know, just thought I'd throw that out there. It's just interesting. Evolve the baby Rotom into a Rotom V-Star. I forget what tool is on the active one. I think it's a big charm. In fact, now that I think about it, maybe... Maybe when I was collecting the list, I got a big charm at an EXP share confused. Maybe there was only two EXP shares and like there was three big charms. So my list that I predicted was correct could be like a card off because of that. It, it, it's just interesting to think about. Also, preferably we want to get a big charm on the crib. It doesn't matter all too much because I think it still dies the Palkia, but like, just, you know, making it harder for the opponent to uh, find a KO is cool. We're also going to use the Rota V Star here to put the rest of the tools into the discard. And we got the big charm. Sick. So, you know, the opponent's going to need even more damage to find a way to KO it. In fact, uh, let me just count. It's, um, it's 80 plus 60 plus 40, so 120 plus 180. Oh my god, he's uh, off the Crobat kill by, uh, yeah. So if he had a full bench, it'd be 160 plus 40, so it'd be 200. So if he benches another Pokemon here, he's still 10 off, which is so funny. He needs a quick stream and tell him plus a boss, plus an energy on the active in order to get the KO. That's so much stress on the Palkia player to be able to find all these cards. And they can't even play a draw supporter to help get me there, because like I said, you need to play boss, so wh what do you even do? Go to play Melody, and that's pretty much, uh, play Melody, and that's basically concede, right? Search out Manaphy, cool, whatever. Yeah, this is so cool. Like, the whole single strike engine is like very neat. I haven't brought a whole lot of attention to it despite it being like at the forefront, but like, 
it's just it's just super cool to see. It's a unique use of the cards. Also, their Tower of Darkness is hollow. I don't know how to feel about that. GP gets all the cool hollows. We don't get any of the cool hollows. They have like they have this blue escape rope that's hollow. It's so cool. Well, he got the uh, he got the quick shooting, but he's still missing the energy and the boss. He also manually attached to the Drizal, so I think it's just game over. I'm pretty sure this is just a GG. Like, what else could you do? You can't. Yeah, yeah, it was over as soon as he attached to the capture energy, basically. <laughs> and the uh, and the Temple of Sinnoh was in the prize cards as well, which definitely helped him out. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, dude's probably playing, like, uh, I only counted, I was only able to count three, but dude was probably playing four, um, four Tower of Darkness. Look how sad he is. <laughs> Anyways, here's the, uh, the second row of that appeared on stream. It's so funny, because, uh, I think he had to change his sleeves. Actually, I, I need to double check to make sure I'm not being racist here. I'm, like, not classifying people correctly. Uh, this is game, right? No. This is game. Yeah, so this is definitely the same dude. Uh, that's right here. But he had to change his sleeves, which threw me off at first. It's like, is there two people playing the same deck here? But no, he just had to change his sleeves halfway through. <laughs> Am I being racist? It's <laughs> a dumb comment. They also have the hollow quick balls, like I said. They just have all the cool hollows. Uh, search it through his deck here. Uh, we're also gonna see that. Uh, actually, I won't spoil it. But this is a uh, this is still a hard matchup because I like the uh, I like the Palkia. Yeah. Well, I made the Palkia comparison earlier, where Rogue's really good when he's able to go first because he just sort of runs his face in every problem. Um, like Palkia, you don't have the option of like alter attacker super easily. You could go into Porygon two, but you can only start attacking in Porygon two after a certain point. Right, whereas Palkia has the option to attack with a uh, Inteleon and Ready Greninja. Um, Rotom doesn't have that flexibility. Uh, Rotom is just Rotom, and unfortunately, that means that it gets a single prize matchup. You just like, you gotta hope for the best. You also aren't running any sort of um, good disruption against the Lost Index as well. Uh, because like, even if they're just uh, trading with Kramer, I'm sure. Kramer say was and whatever their alternate attacker is, Storlax, Razard, uh, Charizard, Raikou, stuff like that, right? No matter what it is, uh, you're probably gonna like lose the prize trade naturally, unless a some good favor happens. I, I feel like in almost all the cases, uh, the Rotom deck should probably be losing this matchup, just on average. We're also gonna see course, and we also see an uh, echoing horn here. This is important to pay attention to as well, uh, because like, you know, echoing horn can be pretty good. Like, if you can bring out a Voltorb, you could kill that with a uh, Sableye or a Raikou. <laughs> the only reason I mentioned Raikou is because there was a Raikou earlier in the tournament, and it's on my mind right now. We also see that there's a Radiant Zord in the deck, so we know this is a more uh, Radiant Zord focused version, probably. Uh, so, you know, this is like Solo Crave with Articodos. There's probably a Snorlax somewhere in here too, I believe. Uh, what else? Are we gonna see Scoopna into a Comfe? Also, remember when I was talking about how like Rome's super good at going first? Uh, this deck is like really good at going second, only because you get to play Chorus uh, going second. And like, as we see here, off this flower picking, he's already uh, four cards of the loss. It wasn't that hard, it was a scoop of bet, plus, um, plus a switch, plus a chorus. Like, that's not a whole lot to expect, especially when you're drawing uh, five cards out of that little exchange, and the Kramer already drops out the first attack. So, that's like, super, super sketchy. And then I believe, uh, I need to double check. Uh, Rota V Star has 250 HP. So if the uh, if the Cram player is playing belts in their list, that means Cram uh, and a Cram attack with the belt will just Oko V Star. On top of that, Radiant are just straight up kills. Uh, you could play Big Charm on your Rota, but unfortunately, 
270 HP is, or, or yeah, 250 HP is so low, man. Even if you're attached to a big charm, you're still gonna die to a choice belt Charizard, right? So this is this is so rough. This is like probably your worst matchup. I, it's like it sucks because it's a very prevalent matchup, especially JP's. But I think JP believes this deck is uh, one of the best decks in the game. Uh, we see both the support Pokemon in his hand, so it's just about like whether he wants to use them or not. Um, you, your po your you're probably more likely to play them this matchup, but I'm not sure. It's a toss-up between wanting to only put up the uh, attacking Pokemon with big charms and try to force your opponent uh, to find a way to brute force around it, or you have to uh, just like drop all your Pokemon and just say, okay, well, I, I know how you're going to map this game already, so I'm just going to give you everything to deal with, and I'm going to go ahead and get all my advantage as soon as I can, right? Uh, it's still a little tough. It's hard to it's hard to say for sure. We also see an air balloon on the active one. Like I said, it's still really tough just because like uh, your Pokemon are gonna die so easily from cram attacks and even radius art attack. Hell, even like two Sableyes kills you with a zigzagoon beam. Like, that's rough. <laughs> we at least see a V Star, um, which is good. And then he has the attack on so he's gonna get his first prize. Like I said, this game always ends in at least seven turns, right? Seven turns, basically. If it's not ended by then, then I don't know what the hell the loss of player is doing. And the other person bricked on energy, so. <laughs> um, this is also interesting too, because this is a best level format, and I don't know what the rules are. I don't know if like they know each other's deck list. But an interesting note, like I said earlier, is that watch out for that Echoing Horde. But we see another Echoing Horde in his deck right now. So he's not free from it. So if he's only expecting one Echoing Horde, then he's in for a sad reality, right? This best of War is so interesting because it really rewards you for being on your guard, but also playing around the right things. Um, but at the same time, it's also best of one, and someone's gonna win that coin flip and be an out of age, so bold. <laughs> that doesn't really leave room for variance either, but from what I've seen, there wasn't too much variance in uh, a lot of these matches. He plays escape rope and puts a Crobat up. I'm a little shocked he put a Crobat up, because I feel like with the Voltorb, he wants to sacrifice the Voltorb anyways, because it's just going to get knocked out. Um, this means that he gets to knock it out on his own terms, but now it means the Crobat is damage. Uh, I'm, personally, I would sacrifice the Voltorb anyways, because what I see here is that the advantage from the Electrode isn't necessarily is that it's attaching energy, like, you'll get there eventually, okay? Um, but I think the real advantage is that it brings you down to three prize cards and allows you to rock sand. So if you just get rid of that Voltorb now, make sure you lost a prize, but it doesn't really matter all that much. The reason why this sucks now is that the Crobat is damaged, it can be easily taken up by Sableye. And then if, if like now the Voltorbs can die to uh, Sableye and then Echoing Horn into another uh, kill on it. So basically, their prize map has turned into knockout Crobat, knockout Voltorb, knockout Voltorb, knockout uh, any other V, right? And that makes it a lot easier than uh, having to kill Crobat, Rotom, Rotom, uh, Electrod, right? Just saying. Because it's like seven prizes, you got more turns to work with. Uh, but it's unfortunate. There's there's a whole lot you could have done to play around that. It would just Basically, what it would have just meant is that you have an undamaged Chromat, but they take the Voltorb prize earlier. So, not sure how much that matters. We're also just going to see attached to Chromat, just so we can retreat. Despite having a uh, lot of air balloons in the list, it's it's funny that we still have the manual retreat. And the manual retreat does suck too. Like, don't get me wrong, because now we have lost that that uh, attachment tempo that we needed on the Rotom. I think that Rotom might have an EXP share, or it's probably a big charm actually. Yeah, it's probably a big charm, so we're gonna attach big charm here. 
This is why I was saying that I think I might have gotten EXP share and a Rota mix or and a big charm mixed up. I think there's definitely more big charms in the list than EXP shares. There's probably like two EXP shares, not three. I probably just got it mixed up, so oops, my bad. Like I said, uh, this player never released their list, so this is entirely just like from observation and watching it play. And the Radiant Zard is also like charge up to you. And unfortunately, as we saw earlier, he was a room boss. At least I didn't see a boss, and there was only four cards I was missing, so there, you can't like boss up the Radiant Zards and deal with it, right? On top of that, this isn't really a deck that benefits from Blossom because, like, Blossom you know, actually hurts you because you want the cards in the discard, not necessarily in the Blossom. So you're technically losing a card by playing a Blossom, Lost City. So, yeah, not really a great way to deal with uh, Radiant Zard. But, like, best you could do is like Path to the Peak, but even Path to the Peak turns off uh, both your V Star attack and uh, and all your support views. I was gonna say Arakudo. But really, it also shoots off Crobat and the option for Lumidiagre. So, there's just no great way to really play around this Radiant Zard outside of just attach Big Charm and Prey. You can't even consider Radiant Carnivore because that only works when you're being attacked by the troublesome stuff indeed. Uh, we're gonna see a manual attachment here into probably a knockout. If, um, yeah, wait, there's no, uh, stuff here. Oh, we're also gonna see a Serena, so we're gonna knock out the Rotom with a Big Charm already. That was, like, his crux, uh, just because, like, oh, you know, maybe this Rotom could live a hit, but he didn't evolve it in time and it just got knocked out. Now he's so far behind on Tempo. But here's the Electrode. The Electrode actually saves it a little, just because we saw earlier is that, like, he had attached to a Crobat, so he's gained his energy back. Now, like, he has attackers charge up for the rest of the game. If the opponent takes a prize, which is funny because you see the card in his hand. I can see it. He has a Roxanne in his hand. This, this is like the cute part I was talking about. Like, you use the electric and put yourself down to three, and then you get Roxanne in your opponent, right? This will work as well when they're running multiple Lacky Wing Hordes in same lies, but you know, it's cute. I like to think it. I like to think it's adorable. <laughs> cool. There's really not too much else to comment on because I feel like the player on the right has reached his idealized board state. There's like more than enough tools to uh, basically end the game with. I don't think he'll need more tools past this point because everything pretty much dies in one hit anyways. Uh, the Radiant Zard is really the biggest threat, and then probably uh, the Snorlax as well. Also what sucks about the Roxanne here is that, like, it gets this deck. Roxanne and Polion is probably the biggest thing that you could do to uh, cock block the Confei deck, but you don't have Polion for very obvious reasons, so you know, they'll end up finding their cards anyways. And even if they don't, like, uh, the loss of that can take its time. Like I said, you have so many turns you can forfeit um, just because like you're a single press deck, which means that you will take seven turns in the game no matter what. You can even take even longer if they don't find a KO somewhere. Two scoop of nets. Not really super helpful this turn, also we just go into Sailor, just do escape rope, back into this. <laughs> Um, so another thing to note here is that the Crobat is already damaged with the Crabrant. That's why the Crobat didn't get sent up here. So this is, this is like some caution to the wood type stuff here. So basically if he sacrificed the Voltorb earlier, he could have just attached an energy to a Rotom instead. And then, um, in this case, he could have set up the Crobat instead. Or, um, he could have still set up the Articuno. But now, you know, all of his Pokemon are going to be damaged at some point, right? Or the same line just attacks and kills the Crobat anyways. So it's not like a really, really great uh, position. I would have gone for the Voltorb for sure. And 
man. It's like really, really hard. Also, my man, my man pulled out that other activated horn. It's a, uh, it's, it's really huge bait when you see the golden echoing horn uh, get lost at the very beginning of the game, and then you see your opponent pull out regular ass echoing horn. Not even a golden version of the card. That's like, that's so bait, right? <laughs> just, just on a like meta level here. It's like, oh, well, if you see like a regular one or a gold one, it's like, yeah, well, that's it. And then you see like the other one, it's the other version of the card instead of being like, you know, two goldens or two regulars. It's one, one regular, one gold. It's so bait. <laughs> it's so funny too. Anyways, uh, this guy loses his Voltorb. And it takes even more damage on the burden. Uh, yeah, the dude on the left surprise mapping is insane. He's like got this on lockdown already. He just needs one more rise of, like his Voltorb is there. What are you gonna do? Evolve Voltorb? Kill it. The only possible I could have seen here is like another rock sand. <laughs> um even the, uh, well, he ends up fighting the Road of Easter anyways, uh, which is pretty neat, all things considered, just because it gives him a little bit extra HP, but even that, it, it's not going to be enough to save anything. He needs to find a way to basically disrupt the opponent's game plan. The only thing that could have done that is, like, another Roxanne. Almost why I think is, like, essential, right? Because, like, you don't want to use Limiteon just to grab, like, you okay, here's the situation. You don't want to save Lumidion only to grab a Roxanne, right? You want to be able to use Lumidion to get actual tempo. Uh, so, you know, being able to have more outs to draw Roxanne is pretty cool. Anyways, this guy loses because Sableye just kills the Voltorb. And unfortunately for our hero, the uh, the single strike Rota players, he ends up taking 9th or 16th. Whatever placement you feel more generously suits him. Barely, barely missing out on top 8 to this match. Which sucks, but like, you know, he played a cool ass deck, so what can I say? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. Uh, I know this isn't like me playing and me giving like the direct notes, but you know, I think it's a cool compensation or a cool idea that hasn't been surfaced yet. I feel like you can definitely play this in standard too. You just cut the, uh, you just cut the V-Star parts and even the Serena parts too. Uh, and with that said, I'll see you guys around later.